Hello everyone. Welcome to 10 Random Records with Yesterday's Trips from the Yesterday's Trips YouTube channel. Hello. Matthew is his name, that's, actually. That's my name. That is his name. Um, we've got, each got five records that we just kind of brought together to show from our collections. So, we'll just start. Miles Davis, uh, Four and More, live, recorded live in concert, 1966 or something like that. This is the first pressing that I got for free from hmm. my mom's uncle, who was a jazz musician and lived in New York, and this was recorded in New York. So my theory is that he went to this concert. Um, That's pretty amazing. It's a pretty nice copy. And it's this is such a incredible live album. It, it's so good. These are these are um they do really fast versions of songs like "So What" from a uh, kind of blue, but it's really fast. And Tony Williams on drums is absolutely killing it. Really, it is crazy. And this pressing is amazing. It sounds so good. Mm. We all listen to it for sure. Highly recommend picking this up if you ever see it. I guess to double that one, I also have a live Miles Davis record. This is a live Evil by Miles Davis. Uh, this is one of his late later records, I believe. I think it's in the seventies. Yeah, this is a weird pressing of this record. It's a club. Oh, sorry. It's a club edition of this record. Uh, it's like. It's more on the fusion leaning side of like his career for sure. Yeah, I was sure. gonna say, is that one like jazz funk sort of deal? It's like jazz it... funk, like fusion mm -hmm. type stuff. It's like kind of a mix of everything, but uh, it's really good all throughout. Like honestly, like I don't know much of his like like later stuff like this, but I definitely need to check out more of it because it's really. Oh, what year was that? I think it's seventy one. I might be wrong. I guess it's more like a bitches brew type Miles Davis than yeah. That. This is for sure very much earlier on Miles Davis. Um, that's very much his later period of kind of fusion funky stuff. So if you like bitches brew, I think that's it. Yeah, and honestly, when I bought this, it was a dollar, so I didn't know what to expect. And also, the cover for this one sucks. <laughs> There's an alternate cover for this. Well, not this is the alternate cover. The actual cover for this is really cool. So yeah, look it up. This one is one I need to upgrade to an original, but I don't know when that's gonna happen. But I'm determined to find this one out in the wild. This is a group from New England, um, so not too far away from where we are. And they were semi popular. They opened for the Beatles on their mm -hmm. 1966 tour. This is the remains. This is a fantastic fantastic record if you like the rolling stones or the beatles or anything along that 60s sort of pop but also like kind of garage vein they're very they're very much like the rolling stones the songs like uh lonely weekend don't look back so great why do i cry was the lead single off of this fantastic song this is a record store day reissue that i did not keep the shrink wrap on for some reason but it's on that white vinyl, and it's got that epic label. But um, yeah, to find an original would be that would be very a, cool. That'd be pretty dang good. Fun. Something that's pretty high up on my want list. That's that's one I need to give more of a listen. Those few, there's a "Don't Look Back" is fantastic off that one. I know for sure. Heart the the opening track is good too. It's really every track to me. I yeah. I I play this one a lot. I guess the the '60s pop sort of thing is more of my style than yours i guess for sure but even if you don't like i mean if you're not into 60s pop this is a garage record pretty much this one's kind of on the pretty on the other end of the spectrum for sure <laughs> this is a uh, armageddon uh if a you record don't... i don't have yeah but uh cheap heat too it's not that expensive yeah I think. if you don't know keith ralph is in this band as well and uh I think, yeah, Keith Ralph of the Yardbirds, and I know there's a member of Captain Beyond in this as well. Bobby Caldwell. Yeah. He's the drummer. Yeah. He's a fantastic drummer. Yeah, this is like, I guess you could consider this a super group, because there's there's a ton of people from just a bunch of other cool bands, like Steam Hammer, I know, is on this too. Oh, that's awesome. Someone from that band. 
Yeah, this is just, this is a smoking hard rock record all throughout. Like, the first song on here, Buzzard, like, it sounds like it should be in, like, a James Bond movie, or, like, some, like, <laughs> like The Matrix or something. Like, that's, so, like, some, like, action movie or something like that. Like, it's, that song is killer. But, uh, yeah, if you're into, like, hard rock and, like, stuff like that, definitely give this one a look. Well, definitely look out for this one. It's on the cheaper side. Like, it runs you, like, 15 bucks. Right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I still haven't found my cheap copy yet. Every time I see it, I feel like it's $30. Yeah. Or something like that. I'm not, I'll never pay that much for that one. Yeah. People, I don't know. Like people, I guess people just know that it's good or something. I don't know. Yeah, I've heard that's that's really good cheap heat for sure. That I just do not own. Next one is one of my favorite records in like my whole collection. I played this so much. And I was thinking about playing it this morning. Um, Gathering of Promises by the Bubble Puppy. Uh, you also picked up an original of this, didn't you? I did. I got that at. Uh, was it? It's Joe's Record Paradise and Silver Spring. Mm. That is a really cool record store. So interesting. I have not been there. Look at the back cover of this. This is what I stare at so cool. when I listen to this record. It's got all the names of the songs and the members of the band. It's all in this big psychedelic mess down here. I got this at our record show, which we'll be at for sure on yes. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Such a good record. Such a good hard rock psych deal. For sure. Heavy psych, more on the hard rock side, great stuff. Yeah, that one's definitely up there for me as well. Oh for yeah, sure, it's so good. I play that one constantly. Next up, we have another hard rock record. This is a uh, Bull Angus. This record is, yeah, this record is just real hard, hard and heavy, like all throughout. Like definitely, definitely a hard rock record for sure. I don't know if you have really define it as anything else. <laughs> Another one I do do not own yet. Yeah. I got a pretty good deal on this one on eBay. Here's the, the there it the is the bull the bull. Yeah, I don't see this one that often. So when I saw it on eBay for like a decent deal, like I think it's like twenty bucks or something. Yeah, I've never like, I've never seen that one in the wild. Yeah, but I have seen it on eBay a couple times. Uh, there's the band members there. Another hard rock record. If you're into that stuff, definitely check this one out. Their second record's also good too, but. I don't have that one yet. Definitely on the lookout for it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I remember streaming that on Spotify a very long time ago and very much enjoying it. Next is an essential album if you're into this kind of music. For sure. Uh, the next two we're showing are like space rock type deals. And this is a really, really good one. UFO 2, one hour space rock or flying or whatever it's called. Um, cover opens like this. Pretty cool. It's got a really cool inner sleeve. Um, if you're into very zony space rock, yeah, you'll enjoy this. It is For very sure. much very zony. Um, 30 minutes of music on each side of this record. So you kind of got to crank your sound system. It, yeah. it uh, plays pretty quietly, but um, they couldn't have split it into a double album because uh, Starstorm... This is the first long song, 17 minutes, I think. And then side two, flying, 22 minutes or something like that. Um, and there's two songs on side two. So it, it's like, um, there's like a normal length song, like three or four minutes, mm -hmm. uh, Coming of Prince Kajuku, which if you listen to that and you listen to Rush, like 2112, um, you can see where they kind of really? got inspired from. Yeah, they were they actually toured with UFO. No. Russian UFO no toured, yeah. Oh my god. Back in their early days. That would have been insane to see what. And um, apparently the guys in UFO used to mess with Rush and stuff, like glue dolls to their pedal boards and <laughs> stuff like that. That sort of guitar riff riffage that's on uh, The Coming of Prince Kajuku, yeah. or however you pronounce it, kind of started with Pete Townsend on ta on Tommy, mm. like the the Undershirt and uh, Sparks. Gotcha. Kind of that same deal. Yeah, if you like space rock, um, definitely an essential. If you like really long, zony songs, uh, another, again, essential. For sure. Another space, spacey record, I'd say. This is uh, X in Search of Space by Hawkwind. Uh, this one's definitely on the heavier side, and it opens up like this. It's got a funky cover. Funky little cover right there. This is a uh, post-Lemmy Hawkwind. But uh, it still gets pretty heavy. 
Yeah, that's for one sure. I don't own either. I don't own any. Actually, no, I do have one Hawkwind. I own. Oh yeah, it opens like this. So. Ugh. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good one. Um. I think if I had to pick a track off this, yeah, it'd probably be Master of the Universe. That one is a very. It's more like it's very droney and just heavy, just upbeat, like very hard good rock song for title. sure. I've heard, I've listened to that album. I've streamed it and. It, Really good, yeah. but like De definitely one of their better records yeah. for sure because they have a lot of them. But uh, I I think I own mo a majority of their '70s discography, and this this one, uh, what's the what's do re mi do re mi fa so la tito? Yes, uh, that one. <laughs> that one I I play a good bit as well. Yeah, that's that is one I own. That's a good one. Yeah, that one's that one's good too. It was the last one I needed. This was like to complete the '70s their '70s stuff. So. I have Sweet. all their stuff. Uh, this last one is one I haven't talked about in years on this channel, and that's pretty criminal, because this is one of my greatest finds ever, and I wanted just a reason to talk about it, and this seemed like the perfect occasion. This is Wake Up It's Tomorrow by the Strawberry Alarm Clock in the shrink wrap. Um, perfect copy, and I actually bought it sealed on eBay for $30. 30 bucks on eBay, and came in the mail it was like half opened because of sh shipping or something and i just cracked that seal right open there's no way i wasn't gonna open this yeah um records need deserve to be played that's my opinion i agree with that statement so if sure. i get a sealed record i crack it open me too unless it's something where i could sell it and get a ridiculous amount more money for it yeah. and i could play it mm -hmm. um it's just a mid copy because it was sealed but um, this is one of my favorite psychedelic records of all time, for sure. That's fair. Absolutely. Um, opens up with Nightmare of Percussion. Pretty crazy. Soft Skies, No Lies. Tomorrow is the single. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too crazy about Curse of the Witches. Side 2 is perfection. Sit with the Guru. Go Back, You're Going the Wrong Way. Pretty song from Psych Out, which I think is a movie. Sitting on a Star. And then the Black Butter kind of trilogy. This is definitely one that deserves to be played on my radio show. If you guys don't know, I do a radio show. I haven't, I'm not going to be able to do it until August. Um, but yeah, I play psychedelic music late at night and jam out and talk about it. Yeah. And it's good and you should listen to it and yeah. every night. Strawberry Alarm Clock is, they're good. I, I, I haven't listened to them much. I definitely need to listen to them more. They're literally one of my favorite psych bands for sure yeah i definitely need to give them more listening time for sure especially that record in particular just this is in terms of psychedelic records this is like a 4.5 in my opinion that's this is a nearly perfect record yeah amazing yeah i definitely need to listen to them more give more praise to them for sure because they deserve it but uh, great. next up i have mystic siva uh, this is a repress of this album because the originals are ridiculous, but this is an early, early repress. It's like an Italian pressing of it from 81. It's really clean pressing and it popped up on eBay and I was like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty affordable. Might as well. Uh, it's just a good like psychedelic rock garage rock album all throughout. Some, some notable tracks off here. Keeper of the Keys is good. Eyes have seen me. Uh, Magic Love is good. Touch the Sky. Great psychedelic garagey tracks all throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spun this one on. Why did it spin it? I streamed it on the uh, on a digital YouTube. Spin. A digital spin, if you will. Yes. And uh, it's great. It's a really, really, really great psychedelic album. That's impossible to get an original copy of. Sure. So yeah, I was I was very fortunate to find this repress because it's an early one, you know, and I was like, yeah, it's pretty close. I mean, that's probably as close as I'm ever gonna get with this record. <laughs> yeah. So figured, yeah, why why not? Well, that brings us to the end of this ten random records. Um, thank you for watching. If you made it all the way, thank you so much. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.